All right, welcome back. Uh, we just looked at mean, sample mean and population mean briefly. We're looking at descriptive statistics right now. Sorry. Uh, we're looking at descriptive statistics, reviewing business statistics. Uh, we talked about size, talked about mean, and talked briefly about population mean and median and mode. I didn't even put those in here. Not that necessary. Anyway, we deal with those later, maybe, if at all. Um, but a mean tells you a lot about a population, right? I can tell you how, well, just about how tall people are on average, right? Or how big something is on average or whatever. Averages are interesting. At the same time, it's important to know how, how, uh, how representative are the averages, right? If the averages are very representative, then, uh, then it's good to know that. But if uh, there are lots of outliers, then we might want to know that too. <clears throat> so, how representative are they? Well, in order to do, in order to find that, we, in addition to descriptive statistics about the mean, we care about measures of dispersion. There are other measures than the ones we're going to look at, but these are the, the two that we care most about are very closely related. We care about variance and standard deviation. And that's what these are. They tell you essentially how spread out your data are, right? So should you expect a lot of variation? Should you not expect much variation? That's what variance and standard deviation tell us, okay? Let me put the formula first for variance here. I'll read it aloud while I write it, um, and then you'll see why I took the time to walk through the, the mean formula. So S squared is our symbol for variance, and, that is, uh, and that's gonna be our sample variance. Sorry, we'll use a sigma for the population variance, but for now, we'll talk about sample variance because we can calculate it. And the formula for S squared looks like this. Let's put a big fraction. It's the sum from I equals one to N of the quantity X I minus X bar quantity squared all over N minus one. Okay, you can see it's similar to the average, right? We're taking a bunch of stuff we're adding them up, that's what the summation symbol means, right? And then we're gonna divide by something, so it's not so different. Um, what do we understand so far? Well, we understand n minus one, right? It's gonna be one less than our sample size. Because you recall, n is our sample size. We have x bar, which we just calculated for a different example, or for an example, but that's gonna be our sample mean. We have xi, which is an observation, right? This is an observation, observed value of x, whatever that is, height, weight, IQ, for person or individual i. It doesn't have to be a person, just has to be a member of the population, but we'll use person for now. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take each person in order, right? I'm going to call them one by one. That's what this says right here. This right here says call them up one by one. And then for each one, we're going to take their value for x, and we're going to subtract away the mean. So this right here, this is a measure of the deviation for person i. It's the deviation from the mean. We're going to take that deviation, and we're going to square it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add them all up. So we're going to add up those squared deviations. And we're going to divide by n minus 1. That'll give us our variance. Okay, so let's do it. Here, let me pull this window in a little bit. Okay, so this is what we had before. We calculated, for this case, we had Alex, Brandy, Carla, Devin, and Aaron. We're looking at their heights. And we calculated that, for this case, x bar was equal to 64. Okay. <clears throat> so... What we're going to do now is we're going to calculate xi minus x bar for each person. So for Alex, uh, x bar is 64. So xi minus x bar is going to be 66 minus 64. So that's going to be 2. For Brandy, xi is 64 and x bar is 64. So this is going to be 0. For Carla, 73 is her height. And the average height is 64 inches. So her deviation is 9. For Devin, his height is 60 inches, the average height is 64, so the deviation is negative 4. And then for Erin, her height is 57, the average height is 64, so the deviation is negative 7. So 
This right here, this is xi minus x bar, which is the part, it's xi, yeah, yes, that's the deviation, right? So xi minus x bar, we just did that. Okay, well now what we need to do is square it. So we just take that column, and in each case we square it. In Excel, you can do this pretty easily if you want. I can show you. In fact, we could have done this differently. I can show you that while I'm here. Could have said equals, and then move over to Alex's height, B2 minus, and then here we have B8. If we put dollar signs here, that won't change. Then we can copy and paste this all the way down. Oh, but you can do it manually if you want. Once we get more comfortable with the formulas, maybe you'll be comp feel compelled like I do to do it that way. Okay, what we want to do is we want to square it now. So xi minus x bar raised to the second, we'll square it. So here you can do equals this raised to the second, and that'll square it. You can also just use a calculator if you want. Um, 2 squared is 4, 0 squared is 0, or we'll do it by hand, these aren't that hard. 81, 9 squared is 81, negative 4 squared is positive 16, negative 7 squared is positive 49. So, <clears throat> now we have a value for xi minus x bar for each person, right? So that's what we did. We basically called everybody up and we found their squared deviation from the mean by person. So what we want to do now is we want to add them all up. So 4 plus 0 plus 81 plus 16 plus 49. We add those together. You can do it by hand if you want. It's going to be 0 to uh, 150. Um, or we can do a sum here. So equals sum and select these. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. E2 to E6. Add them up. You get 150. And that gives us our sum. 150. Okay, not quite done, right? That's part of it. What we have to do now is we have to divide that to get s squared. It's going to be 150 divided by n minus 1. n was 5, so this is going to be 150 divided by 4, which is 37.5. Punch that in your calculator if you like. Okay, now in Excel, we can actually check these answers, which is really handy. We do equals average and select these. We have these five numbers. It turns out the average is 64, so we got that right. You can also do equals standard deviation. Uh, actually, variance, right? That's what we want is variance. And that should be 37.5. Ta-da! Okay, so Excel says that it does it the same way that we do it, which is good to know. That's a, so those are measures of disper or that's a measure of dispersion. That's one measure of dispersion, right? There are other measures. Uh, the one we, the other one that we're going to commonly deal with is going to be standard deviation. Standard deviation is a, a pretty simple uh, formula. Can be pretty simple because the here I can let me we're not going to use Excel now uh, because this is a sample standard deviation. So samp s is what we use for the sample standard deviation. And the formula for s is s equals the square root of s squared, which if you want to skip variance, you can just do this whole big thing. It's the square root of the sum from i equals 1 to n of xi minus x bar, the quantity squared over n minus 1, which this thing in the inside the square the radical is really just the, the variance. So once you find the variance, just take the square root. That'll give you a standard deviation of your sample. Now much like mean looked like this. We had x bar for the sample. And mu for the population. Well, we have variance which is s squared for the sample. It's going to be sigma squared for the population. That's what that looks like. And we also have standard deviation, which is s and sigma. Now, in practice, what we really care about, as I said in the last video, we really care about the population. But what we really can see is the sample. So we're going to work with the sample to find information about the population. 
Um, we're not going to be able to do it perfectly, right? Because when we're looking at just a copy or a subset, we're going to miss some stuff. Um, but we're going to talk about next is how we use prob is a, a branch of math called probability that we use to try to improve our guesses <coughs> and measure how good they're, they're likely to be about the behavior of the population. So stay tuned, and I'll be doing that up next. Bye.